Think you know what way it's going to go? Make your bet at Sports Interaction. Whatever your sport, Sports Interaction has you covered pregame, live betting on all major sports, and prop bets. Want to bet? Head to sportsinteraction.com slash SDPN. 19 and over, please play responsibly. What stands out to you the most? Actually, before you mention what stands out to you the most, in a word, describe that press conference. Honest? Sure. It was, it was very honest. I mean, no matter what we might make of various situations, and we'll break through them all, I'm sure, but, you know, this was the president of hockey operations giving a pretty clear account of where things stand in a, in a number of regards, um, not disguising the truth. And and I think that, that that's probably the best way to, to handle it. When, like when you get to the point that they're at where it just feels like there's so many different angles at play. I mean, we're, we're talking about like players maybe being concerned about the medical staff and the treating of Tanner Pearson. Obviously the performance on the ice has not made anyone happy. You have your captain in the middle of a career year production wise and, and, and looks like you're going to trade him because you haven't been able to reach a contract extension. You have the next head coach seemingly just waiting to step in behind the bench, but the current one, Bruce Boudreaux having to still coach these games. I mean, there's so much um, disruption or, or, you know, it's just, it's not, it's not the way to, you would want to be running a team. I think you have to start by being honest and then they, they have to make tangible moves to, to make things better. I mean, it will sound a little broken record ish, but it, the funny thing about sports is, is you can turn things around. Like, I'm I'm actually of the opinion they don't have to burn it all to the ground. Um, I'm, I'm and nor am I saying this major surgery will be easy, but you know they make a couple of good trades. You know in the lead up to this deadline period, you get into the summer, you make a few more. I mean, they, they really just need to clear out some cap space. And you know, it, as Jim Rutherford himself said, I mean the fact he said it looks like we're tanking. You know, I thought we were tanking. We're we're pretty close to the bottom. Um, I mean, who knows? They might back their way into something that this you know, he's still yet this season. So, um, you know, it looks very bleak right now and I understand that, but that being said, I do think a two or three year window with some good, good management and this team could be in a totally different position. And so we'll, we'll see if it starts with that press conference, but I, I'm with you. It was very memorable. I, I, I watched it, streamed it live and I probably sent seven tweets during that press conference. I mean, there, because you there were so many, but there were so many clear newsy items. I mean, that's what you, Usually you get a lot of words at press conferences and you have to kind of decipher what they may mean. And, and you're, you know, you almost have like your encoder ring trying to figure out what's happening. Um, this was very clear. It's like, you know, Bo Horvat is like, well, I think we've made our best out offer. And, and, you know, it was a fair offer for what he used to be, but now he's something else. Like it was basically like, all right, we're moving on. Like all that kind of stuff. I mean, it, that, that was pretty entertaining theater and, selfishly for someone who sits on this side of the microphone, I, I welcome that kind of honesty from all executives who speak in that, that situation. Don't get me wrong. I, I do too. Like, I think it's great that an exec like Jim Rutherford is willing to just like, kind of bring the blowtorch and just be like, all right, guys, this is the fire. This is what we've got to deal with. It's just considering how the season is gone. It's just one thing on top of another. Uh, was there one particular thing that he said that made you like, like go like, whoa? Well, when he acknowledged that he's spoken to other coaching candidates, like I've never seen that or heard that before. Um, I'm sure maybe it's happened somewhere sometime, but that that's highly unusual. And and this whole situation, how it's unfolding with Rick Tockett is very weird. Um, you know, it's clear that, that he's on his way to be their next coach. Um, you know, the sense I get is that it's sooner rather than later, but you know, I can't tell you what day, what time, when exactly that drops, but it, it does seem very much that, that, you know, that they're finalizing the contract. I mean, that that's, you know, Rick talking on Wednesday night's TNT broadcast, I mean, they had fun with it. He said, you know, I, I haven't signed a contract, but he didn't, he, he also said that he's been talking to Patrick Alvin and Jim Rutherford. So in, in this case, you have both sides openly acknowledging that they, they've had discussions, um, you know, I, I'm not suggesting by any means that Rick Tocca was lying. I, I don't imagine he has signed a contract, but I, I don't think he's very far from signing one. And, you know, there's word around the league. He's been, you know, been talking to potential, you know, hiring and filling out a staff. And so I imagine that that will be the next immediate shoe to drop. That was probably the biggest thing that stood out in my mind. I thought the comment on Horvat was very honest, given where we're at, you know, six weeks from the trade deadline, pretty much, you know, we're in a pickle here or something was, yeah. was, 
the the genesis the, the thought there um and they are in a pickle because he's having a great season he's got every right to to you know get the best contract of his career and and the canucks are have a cap problem so i think that they you know probably will end up moving on from him but who knows i mean we could see another turn in this soap opera i mean maybe in somewhere in the next six weeks if the offers aren't what vancouver needs to get in return for bo horvat they they find a way to get that done and trade somebody else i mean i i feel like anything could happen you know that that was also what i was left with i mean jim rutherford was just saying like we're gonna have to trade a core piece or two it's not gonna be popular like like he was he left a lot of interpretation there now i i do think elias Pettersson will not be getting traded i think it's fair to say he's an untouchable i would think quinn hughes is 98 percent untouchable but maybe they would listen if the right offer came along. It would have to be something that is a, you know, blows their socks off, but you know, it's, it's going to be a fascinating time. And you have to wonder even about Thatcher Demko, right? I mean, he's been out injured. You know, I think we would consider him a core piece there. Maybe that was the core piece that they might look at trading at some point in the future. I mean, as, as I say, I think you listen to that press conference. I mean, everything in terms of trying to figure out what's going to happen. I mean, it just feels like everything's on the table there. It, it certainly does. You're just, I just, I'm just listening to you list off these potential names. And I'm just picturing, you know, if Quinn Hughes happens to be the sacrificial lamb, if Thatcher Demko happens to be the sacrificial lamb, that is, I, I just, because it's Vancouver, it's just not good to go over well. It's just going to be carnage. Well, and that's why I think that's, I think why Rutherford is saying, look, some of this might not be popular. Like that, you know, he came in, Clearly his idea was, you know, you're building a team around Pedersen and Hughes and Demko and, and, you know, a few others, you know, I guess JT Miller joins that group after they extended him. Although I think initially that wasn't likely to be the case. Um, and they were going to build around those guys. That was going to be the minor surgery, right? It's like clear out some of the other pieces, you know, augment them a little bit better. You know, now we're a year later, they're still in sort of cap, jail some of which is of their own making i mean they've signed significant deals in that year period um the players that are underperforming like oliver ekman larson who's a been a healthy scratch recently he's got tons of years left over seven million dollars on his contract you know another year after this one of tyler myers at six million i mean they have you know even brock besser you know the, the canucks have tried to move this year and it's just been hard to do it money wise i mean there's certainly teams out there with what I would call significant interest in Brock Besser, but they, they can't make the math work. And so, um, you know, Vancouver's in a really tough spot. And so the major surgery now be, might be taking off. If, you know, you might be sacrificing an organ there, like the liver is going or something, you know, something you can maybe live through, but you, you've got to, you know, get rid of a kidney or something along the way here. So that, uh, sorry for the surgeon. Sur I, I'm in the, the surgery references. I've been in sort of a hospital to say. Mind, you know, you know, I was about to ask, is your head okay? It's okay, man. Little little sore, a little bit of discomfort, but uh not the kind of surgery we're talking about on the Canucks roster that's needed. It was it was more of the minor surgery, I think, all things considered. Yeah. Um, one last thing before we bring in David Bastel for sports interaction. Let's say uh the deal gets done, Rick Tockett is the head coach of the Vancouver Canucks. From your experience in, in seeing him coach and being around the league, what do you think he could bring to that roster? Well, really well-respected guy uh, is Rick Tockett. You know, it's hard to judge his time in Arizona, right? I mean, you, you look at the teams he has. I mean, look, you can you can draw judgments from it, but, you, you know, it wasn't as though, you know, his previous experience was as the lead assistant with Pittsburgh, and he was sort of the Phil Kessel whisperer back on those Penguins teams when they won the back-to-back the -back Stanley Cups. Um, I think he's being a former player is, is a good communicator and, and, you know, can, can communicate with the players, but, you know, I don't see that as a, a failing of Bruce Boudreaux. I think if anything, Bruce Boudreaux has been kind of known for that. He, he lifted the spirits of a team that was down in the dumps last year. Right. And, 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 you know, at least help them turn around their season and, and get within, you know, whispering distance of the, of, of a playoff spot uh, from a really difficult you know situation. Um, but, you know, clearly what, Canucks management's looking for is, you know, they've, they've Jim Rutherford spelled this out in previous interviews, a team that, that works a little harder in practice that has a little more structure and, you know, we'll see what the whole staff ends up looking like, but I, I think Rick Taka can be the guy. I mean, he's, he's still viewed as a coach who's had interest in other places. You know, I think he got a call from Winnipeg last summer. It wasn't maybe the right timing for him, before, you know, as part of the search before Rick bonus became the head coach, which uh, worked out just fine for Kevin Chevelday off in the jets so far. 
Um, but you know, it's just the circumstances of this isn't isn't ideal for anyone, uh, including Rick Tockett. But I guess you know when you've identified the next person that's going to lead your team or be in a key position, you just make that move, no matter what the optics are or anything. You make that move as quickly and as as gracefully as you can, and and you know get to work because there's a, there's clearly a big job for the next coach of the team. And you know that was the thing with Bruce Boudreau. I would say is he was hired last year mid season in December. And, and I think it was just this contract was for the rest of that year. And for this year, like, like it was, I don't think anyone ever thought that was a long-term hiring just given his age and, and where the team was at. And so I think what you have in Rick Tockett is, you know, the idea that he can be there for three or four or five years and, and lead them, you know, hopefully out of the, the abyss they've been in. And with that tune in on Monday for the next edition of as the Vancouver Canucks do whatever the hell they're doing. Turn. Spin in circles. Yeah. Spin in circles. Something like that.